Su Young reveals that her abusive ex-boyfriend administered violence for five years, took all of her income, blackmailed her with hidden camera footage of sexual activities. Oh, damn. So that's like, so basically he was using like revenge porn as blackmail. He filmed themselves doing things without her consent and used that against her to like take all of her money from YouTube. Monster. And even forced her to work briefly in an illegal hostess bar. So clearly she was under extreme gaslighting and manipulation by her ex-boyfriend. So I want to show you guys the leaked audio recording that she took, I guess as evidence. <laughs> First of all, look at this freaky ass burger that I found. Freak ass burger. This burger literally looks like this. Wait, let me see. Bro. Sometimes I think you might hate me. Sometimes I think I might hate you. Okay, serious time. So I wanted to look into the case going on with Soo Young. Soo Young, for those of you who don't know, is a mukbanger on YouTube with I think like four million subscribers or something. I don't know. I don't know if any of you guys are like fans here of, of her. But yeah, she's a Korean mukbanger. And something recently broke something about her having been in an abusive relationship, like super abusive relationship with her ex-boyfriend for four years. And her YouTube channel was a way to just make money to like pay him back or something. I think the ex-boyfriend was basically taking advantage of her work and I guess sucking the money from her. So she made a YouTube channel to be able to just survive. So the caption here says she was blackmailed, abused, forced to film YouTube videos and underpaid by her ex. Oh, wait, she has 10 million subscribers. Holy shit. I thought it was four. And she was underpaid by her ex. She still hasn't received about 4 billion worth of money, I believe in, in Korean currency. Soo Young reveals that her abusive ex-boyfriend administered violence for five years, took all of her income, blackmailed her with hidden camera footage of sexual activities. Oh, damn. So that's like, so basically he was using revenge like revenge porn as blackmail. He filmed themselves doing things without her consent and used that against her to like take all of her money from YouTube. What the fuck? Monster. And even forced her to work briefly in an illegal hostess bar. Her boyfriend committed suicide during the lawsuit. He was a coward and escaped to hell without any punishment. Every single fucking time, bro. These aren't men, especially when they go out in the way that they do, when they kill themselves to avoid any persecution, any consequence, any scrutiny from the public. These are pussy ass demon fucks. This is a leaked recording that I believe Soo Young took for evidence. So yeah, this audio recording that we're gonna hear in a little bit after we watch the video, is of her being abused physically. So yeah. Welcome back to Crazy TV. Today I have some shocking and updates from South Korea from the previous cases that I've covered. First, we're gonna go into the Tseyang mukbang influencer controversy. Tseyang is a well-known mukbang YouTuber internationally now. She has over 10 million subscribers and almost all of her videos hit over millions of views. Her concept is known to eat a lot of food in one sitting. She literally eats about 20 people worth of food. On top of that people loved her personality of this innocent angelic and soft-spoken personality the way she talks carries herself and even her appearance look at her she looks so probably Whoa, wait, much what is that wait sorry that looks really good oh is that like intestines i've eaten intestines before the way she talks carries herself and even her appearance look at her she looks so probably much younger than her actual age she people who even have met her says that she just had this innocent angelic vibe to her and recently out of nowhere instead of a mukbang video she uploaded a confession video where she was confessing what and I, I actually saw this pop up her live stream popped up on my youtube recommended page but i mean it was it was in i, th I think the title was in korean so like i just i didn't know what it was about but it was just the thumbnail was her in front of this white background and yeah in this the stream was only like 40 minutes long and i mean it blew up because in that stream she talked about she finally came forward with the abuse that she uh, withstood video she uploaded a confession video where she was confessing what she has been going through for the last four to five years apparently there were some rumors going around about her within the korean youtuber community and she just wanted to come forward and confess and tell her side of the story in this shocking confession video she starts off by saying that she was in a relationship with a man about five years or longer 
longer. And it turns out that this person was the CEO of her own MCN slash YouTube company. They were in a relationship before they started this oh, YouTube interesting. company and they decided to start it together. And he became the CEO as she really grew on YouTube. Oh so God. Oh dude, it's worse than I thought. So there was a power dynamic at play. Yang says that when she first met this man, her ex-boyfriend, that he was so good to her and treated her so well. But as time went by, he showed his true personality. I believe she mentioned that this started off when she was just in college as well. And he became very physically violent with her. Eventually, she says that after seeing his true personality and being physically violent, she said that she wanted to leave this relationship and begged him to end the relationship. But the man disagreed. And he says that, hey, I actually have some intimate tapes of you and I'm going to release this everywhere online, including your friends and family. So Piece of shit, bro. Revenge porn? Does Korea not have laws against that? I know. I know revenge porn laws exist in the US. I don't know, laws are really weird in Asia in general, I feel like. Bring your friends and family if we're not together. Due to this threat, she also says that he made her work in the nightlife. Now, in Korean, it's called Yung Upso, which is like the nightlife entertainment. There is a bad rep, but she didn't go into specific of like what she did, but apparently she was kind of like the bartender slash call girl, I guess. People who work in like the Korean karaoke's and bars and things like that where you're pouring drinks for other men. And again, like in Korea, there's a really bad rep when it comes oh, to so she was this forced world to work there? Like working girls in the nightlife. So she claims that she did that for just a very short time. She was afraid that if people found out about her past of working in nightlife, this was going to ruin her, you know, innocent YouTuber image. She didn't do this because she wanted to. Again, she was doing this because her boyfriend was threatening her that she needed to bring in some money. Now, she also claims that the, all the money that she made from nightlife, she didn't get to keep her boyfriend pretty much acting as a pimp but took it all now when Bro. she says that she really didn't want to work in the nightlife she begged her boyfriend that she wanted to leave and that's when he said well how are you gonna bring some money to us well you have to make up for the money imagine that being forced to work in something already super sketchy so you you super don't want to be there it was at a hostess bar and the boyfriend was taking all the money that she was making from that shit like the little bit that you would get from doing something illegal that you know would be kind of like hey at least i got some money from it the boyfriend took that shit. So you're just doing illegal shit for no reason. You're being forced to. And that's when he said, well, how are you gonna bring some money to us? Well, you have to make up for the money that you were bringing me. So she decided to start live broadcasting. And she says that that was the reason why she started doing mukbang to bring money. Which is crazy because it's like, excuse me, like why does she have to bring money to you? Like, are you guys married with children? And like that's also insane. So she started doing mukbangs to make more money. And now look at her with 10 million subscribers. But that's crazy. I mean, in a way, I mean, hopefully that's like, I don't know, some kind of like divine intervention where it's like, or a divine, like a blessing almost. Excuse me, like why does she have to bring money to you? Like, are you guys married with children? Like what so clearly she was under extreme gaslighting and manipulation by her ex-boyfriend when people were asking you know why didn't she leave the relationship and things like that she again says that the man had intimate photos and videos of her and was threatening her family and friends as well now to their surprise her mukbang videos and broadcasting did really well she grew to half thousands now millions of followers and it was generating a lot of revenue but during this whole time for four years why while she was live broadcasting and making these amazing YouTube videos for her fans, she was being hit physically assaulted Just every suffering. single day up to two times, she says. And now that we see going back to her past videos, there's bruises oh, wow. and she's wearing like bandages on her body. And she claims that, that oh, was that's so sad, dude. And it's so dark. Imagine being a fan looking back at old videos you used to enjoy and seeing clues in plain sight that she was getting abused. Actually, the evidence of being physically. On top of that, I mean, Tsiyang has again millions of views in her videos. She says that within the last four years, she generated about four million dollars technically wow. a little less than four million dollars if you convert the korean one Jesus. but still she was known to do a lot of sponsored videos and she was probably getting almost like six figures for one post so that's a lot of money and she says that she did not see a dime of that money because he took it 
And the fact that she didn't see a dime of it and somebody just took it, like, what did he do with it? We don't even know. It's but, so sad, bro. Wow, we all this time we thought she was being humble. Most men like that when, like, w- when you hear stories of this, when they're they're stealing all of the money from their successful, actually successful girlfriend, they be doing stupid ass shit with the money too, like gambling, stupid ass investments to try and get rich, and then they just lose it all because they're, I mean, they're brain dead. So going a little back again, when she started to gain attractions and a lot of subscribers, that's when. They they decided to establish an MCN company for her YouTube channel and he became the CEO of her own company. This is a common thing in South Korea, like big YouTubers or even mid-sized YouTubers will literally have their own staff who edits the videos, who do the sound, have their own camera crew, you know, people who have managed the I account. need an editor, bro. Thing. And she had multiple staff members and I just needed to say that he would even physically in front of the staff members and would also be very mean and cruel to the staff members and as they saw what was happening for years they finally got through to Tsiang and helped her to report him to the police for various various criminal crimes as the police started to get involved this is when again there were some rumors about her her past and what she was going through and couple youtubers found out about this we're gonna get into that in just a second but as the police was looking into this case um, actually, her ex-boyfriend unalived himself. Yeah, like a little so she pussy, says that actually- like the little pussy bitch that he is. Yeah, let me make this girl's life a living hell for years, right? And then after I've had my fun, I'm just gonna exit and not face any of the consequences that I brought upon myself. Himself. So she says that actually the case has been dismissed because the suspect is no longer here. This is when we get into even a crazier kind of a rabbit hole when it comes to other Korean YouTubers. Hey, up, As this thing was going on, I guess, a couple months or a year back, that is when a couple YouTubers found out about what was going on, about her past, having her intimate videos. And we find out that two mid-sized YouTubers with over about 200,000 subscribers, they decided to cash in on Siyang's painful past. So these two specific YouTubers are what? known to be Odeka YouTuber, which is known to be like, these are accounts that specifically make videos about negative press. They only really upload anything that is exposing and very negative rather than trying to help somebody, like help a victim. Oh, so it's like Keemstar, Korean Keemstar basically. So there's even phone call recordings of these two YouTubers going back and forth about how they're acting as a damage control person. Basically, they were receiving money from Tsiyang's company to keep it quiet, like a hush money to not have any other YouTubers talk about this, um, to not upload any exposing videos. And in the phone call, he says that he claimed to have received about over $10,000 for keeping Tsiyang's past and intimate tapes a secret and not making a video about it because I guess- That is so fucked, bro. If I got an email ever like that, like, hey, like I, we know you, sometimes you touch on subjects, Omar, what if we give you like $5,000 to just like not not talk about this fuck no bro i'm a greedy ass motherfucker i like money for something like this like take that money and shove it up your ass bro and intimate tapes a secret and not making a video about it because i guess if these youtubers make a video about it again exposing her past it could make her look in a very bad light and as you guys know in south korea anything if you have a past about working in the nightlife entertainment you know being a call girl and things like that they say that a lot of the times, you know, your image just goes down to the ground and you're kind of like done in the industry. Like you can never really come back as that negative past and image will always stick with you like a sticker. In this recording messages, one of the YouTuber even says, hey, I should have received honestly up to $200,000, but I'm not going to because I have my morals and I understand that she was being physically by her CEO and ex-boyfriend, so I only decide to receive $10,000. And a lot of netizens are saying, I took less money to not talk about it. I'm actually a good guy, okay? Saying, wow, these YouTube channels are literally evil. I'm really revolving and waiting around like hyenas for somebody's downfall in order to make money just seemed not right. There are YouTubers who are using this kind of idea, but in a more positive light, such as that are exposing suspects 
of like one of the biggest crime cases in South Korea and exposing their identity because they never got the proper punishment and justice like that is seen in a different light when you're using when you're doing these kind of like exposing videos crazy how somebody with over 10 My million girl subscribers Stephanie who Sue. were known to have this innocent mango. clean angelic image like Tseyang was going through something crazy behind the doors and nobody literally nobody knew about it because she had such a bright yeah, I uplifting give her a big hug, energy dude. to her I was even shocked I was like how could somebody be smiling and have this angelic vibe when she's on you know camera and eating all this food and bringing joy to a lot of her subscribers and behind the scenes she was going through something really evil and dark how many of more victims are out there doing live broadcasting and in, in these shows while being forced by somebody behind camera yeah that's the too young case so i want to show you guys the leaked audio recording that she took um i guess as evidence <laughs> Piece of shit, bro. Okay, I'm gonna pause it there because there's we're not even halfway through it. I think these are her lawyers. Yeah, man, very, very sad. You cannot call yourself a man. I know it's cliche. Everybody says this, like, you can't be a man if you put your hands on a woman, but I actually think you're just less, less than human, almost. Especially if the girl's not even disrespecting you. He just took advantage of a nice girl, stripped her of her money, her mental health, all for his gain, for no reason, and beat her? Like, why? At that point, why do you beat her? She's already afraid of you. She's you're already blackmailing her with revenge porn. Basically. Why hit her at that point? He was just doing it for fun No, yeah, I wish I could give her a big hug cuz she's like she's so sweet I mean like just look at her bro. Let me see this. is Oh, but yep There's her live stream from five days ago 45 minutes long It's in this stream where she finally comes clean about all the abuse that she endured Let's see one of her videos actually this is seven days ago like, look, like, she's just, she's just so sweet, bro. Going forward, at least she'll be okay. She's safe now.